Hi, second graders. I hope everybody is doing well and staying healthy and getting all their work done and having a chance to play outside because it's beautiful outside, shooting basketballs, anything like that. Um, this is going to be chapter eight, religion. So it is titled Journeying. Once you listen to this recording, I would encourage you to listen to it two, maybe three times then you can go ahead and hop on Flexi Quiz and mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or even brother and sister might be able to help with that. So before we get started, um, let's go ahead and do an Our Father together. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So chapter eight, journeying. So it says, on the way. Um, don't worry about writing this down. If you want to on a separate sheet of paper, you can. But just think of them in your head as we go. So it says on the way. Part of the fun of going away is getting ready. Imagine you are going on vacation or to camp. You'll be away for a while. What three things will you be sure to pack in your suitcase? So go ahead and think of maybe three things that you would take with you. Um, for certain, you would need clothes, right? Um, maybe a toothbrush, toothpaste. I would just count that as one thing because they're kind of like a package deal. Maybe a hairbrush. Maybe for some of you it's important that you take a stuffed toy. It's up to you. So think of three things that you might want to take with you on that suitcase. And it says prayer. Jesus, faithful friend, help me to walk with you so that I can spread your word to others and live in your love. The man on the road. Two of Jesus' followers were on a journey. They were leaving Jerusalem. Jesus, their friend, had died on the cross there. Along the way, the two friends met a man on the road. He asked them why they were so sad. They told him that their friend Jesus had died. Some women had said that Jesus had risen from the dead, but they were not sure what to believe. The man began to walk with the two friends. He reminded them that the scripture said that God would send a savior who would suffer, die, and then enter to heaven. So you guys already know this story. You might not know about him walking on the road, two Jesus' followers walking on the road, okay? But you know that Jesus died on the cross for us. You know he sacrificed his life, and you know that he rose back up to heaven. We call that the resurrection. That was on one of our other tests. So you guys already know this. As the evening came, the three travelers arrived at a village. The two friends invited the man to stay for dinner with them. At dinner, the man took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to him. At that moment, the friends knew that this man was the risen Jesus. Then Jesus disappeared. The friends went happily back to Jerusalem. They told everyone there that they had seen the risen Jesus. So, you guys know that in Mass, Father Jim, Father Chris, or the priest, wherever you go, breaks the bread and says, take this in memory of me, right? And we believe that the bread is the body of Jesus. And when it, when it goes from bread to body, we call that the consecration. You guys had that vocabulary word in one of the other chapters that you had over this last couple of weeks. Pop quiz, what do we think that the wine is? Say it out loud or in your head. The wine is, represents Jesus's blood. All right, so our journey. We are like Jesus's friends on the journey from Jerusalem. They welcomed Jesus. They knew him in the breaking of the bread. Then they went back to Jerusalem. They wanted to tell everyone that Jesus is still with us. 
We too are on a journey, our journey of faith. We recognize Jesus in the Eucharist. We welcome Jesus into our hearts. We welcome him in the people we meet. We share his love with others. We want everyone to know about Jesus and all that he does for us. So think about that. Think of everything Jesus does for you. He's blessed you with maybe your brothers and sisters, your moms and dads, your aunts and uncles, right? Everybody who loves and cares about you came from Jesus. All right, and then the final blessing. After receiving Holy Communion, we take time to sit or kneel quietly. We, we all typically kneel until after the priest sits back down. It is a time to thank Jesus. Then the priest stands for the final blessing. We stand at this time too. Sometimes the priest or deacon tells us to bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. He asks God for a number of special graces for us. Grace is the gift of God given to us without earning it. And we've had this vocabulary word before. So that shouldn't be a surprise to you. So grace means the, is the gift of, that God has given to us without us even doing anything to earn it. Then we bless ourselves as the priest prays. May Almighty God bless you. And when he says this, we make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we answer, Amen. This should sound familiar to you. We do this at the end of every Mass. Alrighty, and then we have dismissal. The priest or deacon then tells us, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. We answer, thanks be to God. Our celebration of the Mass has ended. We have prayed with our parish family. Now we leave church and go about our daily lives. Our mission is to live what we celebrated. We have been sent to glorify the Lord by loving and serving God and others. We will continue to receive Holy Communion as often as we can. We will continue to praise God by living holy lives. It says, I listen to God's word. Jesus said, peace I leave you with, my peace I give you. So this should sound familiar too, because when we say the sign of peace, this is what typically the priest will typically say. So we know that we're supposed to live out um, our church in our daily lives. We do this by treating others with respect, by being kind to one another, by helping one another, by praying for one another, right? So you guys are already living out Jesus's words without even realizing it. Some of the, in the way you act and how you treat others. Alrighty, now this one, I know that you would love to color it. Um, if your parents want it for you and they have access to a printer, I can send them a picture and they can print it out for you. But it says, choose one color to fill in the spaces marked with an X to find the hidden message. Use that word to finish the sentence below to finish color around the hidden message using different colors. So you guys can all see L O V E. Jesus tells us that God has a great love for us. Alrighty, so that is chapter eight. So let's go ahead and close out chapter eight with a prayer. Together, let us say a Hail Mary. Hail Mary, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Make sure to go ahead and listen to this a second or even a third time, and then take the flexi quiz on this chapter. Thanks for listening.